This is Dr. Michael Hoke. This is an overview of the art of creating cortical spinal tractography. The first track you should really get comfortable with when starting to interpret fMRI DTI. So what is it? Well, the cortical spinal tract or the CST is the primary motor pathway that carries signals to the contralateral side of the body. Mapping out this track for our neurosurgeon colleagues is essential as you don't want the patient to wake up with a new or worsening motor deficit after surgery. We use a two-point approach. First, you place the seed point in the cerebral peduncle, which is blue in this case, and then you create fibers with your post-processing software. There are too many or spurs fibers on this one-point approach, so then we create a second point, an inclusion point, in the ipsilateral motor cortex, in this case is pink, to connect the two points. Identifying the motor cortex is easy when there's no pathology. But, unfortunately, fMRI patients requiring planning before surgery usually aren't perfect examples of anatomy. It could have a tumor, previous post-surgical changes, or even a cortical malformation. So we should remember all the tricks defining the central sulcus, such as the hand knob omega sign, the motor strip is thicker than the sensory strip sign, the next posterior sulcus, to the intersection of the precentral and superior frontal sulci is usually the central sulcus. And another trick that not many people are familiar with is the change in signal intensity of the sensor motory cortex due to the differences in myelin and iron in the cortical layers of eloquent brain. Usually at least one of these signs can be used to find the motor cortex. So here's our case again, a 22 year old with a PXA our first seed in blue is in the cerebral peduncle, and then we place our second inclusion ROI in the motor cortex in pink. And we tell our post-processing software to connect the dots to generate our fiber track. Now once we have a track, we should fill it out or make it more robust by altering the DTI thresholds on our software. Decreasing the FA equals more streamlines, and increasing the angle also gives us more streamlines. But we don't want a single twig or too many spurious fibers, so a happy medium is our goal that should match what we know white matter dissection atlases to show us. And then in our report, we can describe the relationship of the CST to the target lesion. Now I'm comfortable reporting measurements of the track to the flare and enhancing margins of the tumors. Why? Well, because I know that our neurosurgeon colleagues are smart and they know the limitations of DTI tractography. So once that craniotomy happens and tumor debulking occurs, this leads to brain and fiber tract shift, which is shown nicely in this paper by Nimsky et al. in 2005. Another post-processing step I do is to create double oblique snapshots of generated tracks to show them in the most complete profile within the, with the lesion. In the NPR setting of your software, in this case Siemens, Singovia, and Leonardo type software, you place the image slice along the long axis of the track in two different planes. Here is a double oblique coronal of the cortical spinal tract and a tumor with measurements. Another limitation of tractography that we should be familiar with is the deterministic method or conventional method of tractography omits cross fiber tracks. We know that CST is responsible for the arm, hand, and face, but routinely we don't see fibers to these cortical areas with conventional DTI. This is due to the crossing fibers of the arcuate fasciculus or the primary language pathway. And here these blue circles represent where the omitted cortical spinal tracts should be anticipated. O'Donnell et al. has a nice diagram of these vectors crossing out or creating spurious false fibers. You have to be mindful of this limitation in our radiology reports. Here's another case of a cavernoma in the left frontal operculum where the fibers to the face are omitted. It's a good idea to anticipate where the missing fibers could be and add this to our reports. Just because we don't see the intact fibers on DTI doesn't mean that they aren't there. 
Finally, here is a case of a cortical dysplasia involving the left motor cortex and cortical spinal tract. It is a good idea to overlie the tractography with your bold data in order to increase your confidence in your interpretation. If the bold regions overlap, we can be more certain that the motor tractography of the cortical spinal tract is accurate even in a case with abnormal cortical anatomy. Here's the two references I mentioned. Next issue, we can go over the arcuate fasciculus language tractography. Thanks.